Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Amir Ali Khosrozade, and welcome to my presentation, in which I like to talk about identification of material parameters of coercive law in delamination of laminated composites. My presentation is divided into five parts. First of all, I will talk about introduction and literature review. In the second part, I will talk about coercive zoom model and damage criteria. And then I will look at the inverse method of identifying material parameters. And next, I will go over results and discussion. And finally, I will end up with conclusion. Nowadays, composite material play considerable role in various industrial fields, such as aerospace, wind turbine, and etc. Composite laminated material are widely used because of their low cost, increased toughness, corrosion resistance, high strength, and weight reduction of structures. Thanks to these inherent features, studying their various damage, criteria, damage modes is essential. Among the various failure modes of composite laminated materials, delamination is one of the most important and frequent failure uh, mechanisms. Therefore, quite, recent, quite recently, considerable attention has been paid to computational simulation and testing of delamination. Several numerical modeling has been proposed, such as VCCT, which is virtual correct closure techniques, and CZM, cohesive zoom model, and etc. So, uh, Barmuttel, in 1962, uh, proposed a cohesive zoom model uh, to study the fracture burter of materials at the atomic scale, and Jockey, in 2016, uh, optimized the CL parameters by measuring the fracture energy. Yin et al. in 2020 proposed and developed a four linear cohesive law, which is novel, uh, to finding the fracture toughness ratio. However, other parameters were determined by experiments. The CZM is an accurate method for prediction of delamination process in laminated composite materials. The constitutive law in CZM is based on the process of interlaminar fracture at the interface where crack may initiate. The CZM is divided into two parts. In the first part, the linear elastic relation between the traction and separation is modeled, and the slope of the first part is important parameters for description of the CL, and it refer as the interface stiffness and it represents by K0. In the next part, we can see the damage parameters is D and it's between 0 to 1, between 0 and 1, and it, at 0, the damage initiation starts and the D, when D is 1, the damage, uh, is, the damage is fully developed and uh, the failure occurs. You can see the fracture energy G is equal, the area under the CL curve. The damage initiation criteria. At this part, the quadratic stress cr uh, criteria is ad adopted in the paper and is written as this equation uh, where <coughs> sigma n and s and t are represented by the normal shear and through the thickness stress in the cohesive elements of the crack t, respectively. For the second part, constitutive equation of the CLs respectively written as these two kind these two equation for linear and equation and exp exponential. In these two equation you can see delta I max uh, refers uh, to the maximum value of the effective displacement attained uh, during the loading history and the delta IF and delta IO refers to the value of the effective displacement damage at the onset and failure. You can see these two at the this figure delta critical and delta zero. The another parameters should be determined, which is alpha for exponential. 
and these parameters control the overall shape of the cohesive law. So, in this paper, uh, based on the relatively simple experiment, we propose an inverse inverse method for prediction of the cohesive law and obtain the proper value of the material parameters of the two widely used cohesive law, linear and exponential. In various cases of engineering applications, some unknowns and parameters might exist in problems. In order to identify these parameters, inverse methods are utilized. The damped least square method allowing the Tikhonov regularization has been proposed. In order to find these unknown parameters, the following cost function should be minimized. The P is a vector, vector of unknown parameters. The gamma is a regularization parameter. T, P, and T, of I are calculated major data at, uh, at the sampling point. In order to obtain the unknowns, uh, the cost function must, must minimize. And you can see in this equation, we have sensitivity matrix and vector of unknown parameters as, uh, as these. To, to solve this equation, and to solve this equation, we have to use forward final difference and to reach the iterative form, and, uh, and this is an iterative process. And iterative continue, uh, iteration continue until one or both of the following convergence uh, criteria are met. In result and discussion, the result of identification material parameters of the linear and exponential CZM are presented. Here, in, in order to investigate different aspects of the inverse analysis, the data points are obtained numerically instead of the performing, performing an experimental experiment. Uh, a random error is added to the data in order to simulate the, te the test condition. In figure 1, the ex experimental and the filtered load displacement curve of the DCB test, you can see these data points are obtained. Uh, and the noise is removed by the pr pr proper filter. So, the filter data, which you can see, uh, is in figure 1. Uh, so, the identification process began, began with uh, initial guess. The init after the initial guess, uh, by the minimizing the cost function, the unknown parameters of cohesive law are obtained in the iterative process. In order to investigate the effect of initial guess and measuring the error, uh, each problem is solved once with 3% measurement error and once with 10% measurement error. The linear and exponential uh, <coughs> cohesive law are considered for the identification problems, the unknowns in the unknowns in linear and uh, par and exponential law are respectively with uh, delta sigma max sigma max and delta f and delta f and alpha respectively. For numerical example problems being solved, the actual value of these par parameters are shown. Are shown in table 1. Additionally, uh, two sets of initial guesses are given. In table 2 and other table, which is table 3, you can see the inverse algorithm is capable, capable for identifying the material parameters of cohesive law, even the per, per, presence of measures error. Also, it is noticeable that even when the initial guess are not close to the actual value uh, of the parameters, good estimates of unknowns can be found. And this is the table 3. And you can see actually the inverse algorithm is capable to, to identify the material parameters. And next, uh, uh, in this figure, in this figure, 
you can see in order to the access of the correct uh, correction of the inverse solution the load displacement curve of the DCB test are obtained with the identified parameters and compared with experimental curve in figure 2 and figure 3 you can see the identified curve and experimental data uh, which the actual and identified load curve uh, each your exponential cohesive law and this is for linear law and this is for exponential cohesive law finally in conclusion we can see uh, we can see the DCB test is widely used to determine the behavior of mode 1 fracture however it is challenging to determine the, these parameters of the cohesive law uh, for the DCB test alone in order to uh, in the present research an inverse method was presented for identification of material parameters of various cohesive law through some numerical examples it was shown that the proposed techniques can give an ac good accurate estimate for unknowns and good ag agreements between the identified and experimental result was proposed. It was also shown that the proposed method can handle uh, handle measurement error and situation and uh, situation in which a reasonable initial guess is not available. And finally, I want to thank you for your attention. Have a good time.